Blood Running is a stylish pixel art extraction shooter. In the game, you'll enter the cyber wastelands, fight off androids and bandits, loot valuable gear, and venture into the remnants of a world in ruin. Today, I'm going to show you the three vibrant maps I designed and the three major features I added in year one of development. Starting with map number one, the Badlands. When I first started designing the Badlands, they were pretty boring. The map was fully procedural and the art looked flat. I added some trees and other objects, but it still didn't look good. It was dull and didn't feel alive. I always loved the artwork in Hyperlight Drifter, so I used that as inspiration for the new design. For the new artwork, I aimed to make the Badlands more vibrant with new areas to explore. I started by updating the parallax background. I added villages, inhabited by nomads, since the game has a cyberpunk vibe, I added android enemies. They're slow, but they hit hard if you let them get close. And you can see just how much the Badlands have changed in the past year. Below the wasteland, we have the cave systems, with old minecarts where you can loot charcoal for crafting. I don't want to give too much away, so I'm not going to show the enemies that live down here. But take my word for it, they are brutal. The first version of the swamps had a massive Piss Lake. <laughs> now, the water is bright blue and it looks way better. I also added colorful plants to make the swamps really pop. I wanted the swamps to have darker vibes, so I decided to add cultists. The first mock-up looked something like this. I settled on the bottom row and redid the color. The cultists are led by priests armed with deadly machine guns. I also added frogs to the swamps. When you kill them, they drop frog legs. You can use the frog legs to craft a surge stem that makes you run faster. Compared to the other two maps, I wanted Eden to feel more alive and friendly. I added big trees and lots of plant life. The story behind Eden is that there was a massive war between the Tempests and the local inhabitants. But the Tempests ran out of money and eventually abandoned the forest along with their massive base. The first animal I added to Eden was foxes. You can kill them and sell their tails to merchants. I almost feel bad about shooting them. As you explore Eden, you'll meet Dave, a survivalist NPC. He'll send you on quests to gather supplies and fix power stations. Below the forest is an underground base that the Tempests left behind. Here's a quick sneak peek. Weapon modding is key for a great extraction shooter. To pull this off, the weapons in my game need to be pieced together with different attachments. I started by brainstorming some weapon ideas. The first class of weapons I created are scrap guns, inspired by the pipe guns in Fallout 4. These weapons will be pretty weak and serve as the player's starting arsenal. The second class of weapons I added were more normal quality guns. These pack a real punch compared to the scrap gun. In the future, I'll be adding laser guns to the late game loot pool. Now that I had weapon ideas, it was time to pick them apart into modules. Each gun will have different attachment capabilities. For example, this rifle can have a stock, grip, magazine, muzzle, and sight. But the shotgun isn't compatible with any attachment. Now it's time to design the inventory art. The player weapons are very small and don't look good in the inventory, so I decided to make separate inventory art for each weapon and attachment. Next, I dynamically piece them together in Game Maker using offsets from the inventory's spray origin, and finally draw the full weapon in the inventory. Since each attachment can be added to the inventory, I made a separate piece of art for each attachment to serve as the item sprite. Now that the mods are added to the game, the player needs a way to mod their weapons. Enter the workbench and the weapons workbench. The player could unlock both of these workbenches by talking to the building manager inside of the outpost. You can then place them in your base, and head over to the workbench and start modding your guns. Another key feature of Extraction Tutors is the Tetris inventory, because for some reason, gamers are masochists about inventory management. I started by creating a grid data structure in Game Maker, then I created a class for all the items to inherit from. Items have a cells high and cells wide property, which tells containers how to handle them in the grid. To rotate items in the grid, I swap the cells high and cells wide variables and rotate the item mark. If the player picks up an item, I store the container and position it was picked up from and draw it on the cursor. If the item can't be placed in another valid container, 
container, the item is placed back where it was from originally. For the guns, I added an override which pieces the attachments together and draws the full sprite in the inventory grid. Finally, a great extraction shooter is not complete without quests. All the quests in the game are loaded through data files, which allows me to quickly add quests with different conditions to complete. I also added an NPC named Atlas who gives out daily quests that refresh every 24 hours. Once you complete a quest, you'll be given the rewards listed, and some quests also have the option of choosing a reward. Bonus feature number four is dynamic skins. In order to have lots of armor without creating animations for each type, I'm able to easily apply skins to the human life forms from Armor Item. If you want to know how I did this, watch the next video where I explain the full process and code behind it.